Welcome to Spiritual Dialogues with Father Udon de Castro. We are here at Ariana Lay Monastic Community. I'm your host, Brother Lodi. With us is Sister Dachi. Sister? Yes, Father. So let's, shall we continue what we were talking about? So, as we have mentioned in our yeah. pro- pro- previous program before, the crisis meeting in the Vatican, that that meeting is going to go nowhere, it's going to be a total failure. And the only reason we say that is because it has always been a total failure in the Catholic Church. And we have seen the example in the time of Peter Damian in which the Catholic Church was filled with sodomies, with gay people, with homosexuals and so on. It was very serious during that time around 1100, so very, very serious. Uh, can I ask a question, Father? Yeah. He gave a solution. You mean they did not apply it either in the 1100s? Well, um, it happened even before the of 1100s. Of course, yes, of course. You know? Then? And, um, of course, one of the popes, you know, yes, Benedict the Ford, the yeah. Ford and so on like that, uh, saw it, but he was too young. He was a 22-year-old pope, oh, really? you know, at okay. that time. At that time, it was okay. Were, Choosing popes left and right yeah, to okay. work. And, then? and so the popes could not solve it, really. Yes, so they asked. And there are many popes who couldn't solve it with, together with the okay. rotation, yeah. Okay, and then they asked, you know? And then, then there was a good pope, um, Pope Leo, I think his name, who at least was a very honest person. He couldn't solve it either. Yes, yeah. Neither did his bishops and cardinals solve it, but. He had a suspicion, what is a solution? Mm-hmm. Well, because during the time, 1100s, people, especially the bishops and the priests and the cardinals and the popes, at least they knew their theology. Mm. I mean, they studied good theology. Mm. They were not graduates of this modern yes. uh, theology, theological school where you learn nothing but heresies. Mm-hmm. But they were good. And one pope knew that the solution was something that was in his mind Mm -hmm. and only one person could solve the problem and he chose saint peter damien he was a benedictine but he was living the monastic life in a very strict observance very very strict not according to saint benedict he was observing it according to the interpretation of Saint Fructuosus of Braga, Mm -hmm. that is a Spanish Mm -hmm. father of the church, together with Saint Leander, Saint Isidore, these are the famous Spaniard saints. Or this Peter Damien was living his monastic life according to the tradition of Saint Basil the Great. Mm -hmm. These are the Mm -hmm. first monastic orders, they're very, very strict. Mm -hmm. And this Pope knew very well that the only way to solve this problem is a strict monastic life in the tradition of Climacus and Pacomius and Cassian. Mm. These are monastic founders whose names you don't hear anymore today. Everybody is hearing the word of St. Benedict, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, Mm. but... St. Pacomius, St. John Cassian, nobody hears those words anymore. Father, that monastic life, it changes the person and it brings them that supernatural position where he can communicate or union with, with the divine? Yes, and here is where we are now going to analyze the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In other words, we're going to answer the question, how come these cardinals and these bishops and priests Yes. We're guilty of such a sin called sodomy. Oh my or, God. you know, abuse of children and so on. How come they became homosexuals and so on like that? Very serious sin. All you have to do is read the newspaper and see what sins they have committed, which you don't have to discuss here. Mm. But the question is, how can you change nature of a homosexual, of a person is abnormal? Very easy. In fact, it's very easy. <laughs> Why can't they change it? <laughs> it's as easy as uh, stopping smoking. Can you 
simply explain it for them. Yeah, we're going to explain that when we come to the solution. The problem. Let's okay. first analyze the problem. Okay. How come it happened? And we are going to see how it can be reversed. How the problem can be reversed. So the analysis of the problem comes from ascetical theology. It's the theology of the Catholic Church. Mm. It's written there. That's why we're saying it's written there. So nobody's excused to be ignorant of this. Now, St. John Cassian says that there are what you call vices, seven vices. Yes, Father. Now, these seven vices are natural tendencies. Mm -hmm. As long as they are natural tendencies, they're okay. They're okay. Mm -hmm. They're not vices. As long as you don't uh, allow it. To Indulge. Maybe. Well, as long as they are like that, mm. unnatural, mm. they're okay. They're not sinful. Example. However, the moment you use it inordinately, mm. yes. you abuse it, it becomes a vice. And the moment it becomes a vice, it becomes a source of sin. Yes, Father. The vice is not a sin. The it's sin comes from the, the vice. vice. It's a tendency. Yeah? So it's just a tendency. Mm -mm. Now let's look at the seven. Mm -mm. And not to prolong our discussion because we're only 15 minutes. Yes, right. <laughs> we'll just discuss the first three or four. Okay. The first one is called gluttony. Mm -hmm. The vice gluttony. The natural normal thing is eating. Yes. Everybody does. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Everybody's eating. Mm. That's natural. And we're saying that's even good. It becomes a vice of gluttony if you inordinately eat. Mm -hmm. So you eat uh, all the things that you, you like, you drink what you like. Inordinately, inordinately, that's the word, inordinately. You mm -hmm. abuse it. It becomes a vice. And from that vice comes sin. Meaning to say, probably because you want to eat nice food, you're going to steal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that sin comes from the vice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the first vice, according to St. John Cassian and Climacus. That's the highest vice closest to saintliness, holiness. So that's one step below holiness. That's the easiest vice. Mm. To acquire. Mm. To acquire. Mm. Not very serious. Mm. It's very easy to cure. Mm. How do you cure gluttony? Well, the Catholic Church has fasting. Mm -hmm. So we, have, we are now in Holy Week. Mm. And the Catholic Church tells us during Holy Week, Ash Wednesday and so on, you fast. The intention is to cure your vice, if you have a vice, to cure it. So sin will not come from the vice. It will return to just being normal, natural eating. Mm -hmm. Normal. Yes. Human. It's no longer a vice. Now, if it becomes a vice, and sins begun, begin to come from it, you go down to the second level of the vice, which is lust or promiscuousness. Mm -hmm. You will desire to have pleasure in sex. Yes, Father. In gluttony, pleasure in food. In lust, it's pleasure of the flesh. Yes, Father. Okay. Now, it's all right to be attracted to have pleasures of the flesh. That's why you marry. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with uh, marrying. There's nothing. St. Augustine has a nice book, The Good of Marriage. Mm -hmm. For some people, the only way to save their souls is to marry. Mm -hmm. The good of marriage, it is an instrument, a very mm -hmm. important instrument to save your soul. Mm -hmm. So as long as you use marriage in the right way, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's even something holy. But the moment your desire for the pleasure of the flesh becomes inordinate, mm -hmm. 
inordinate That's abusive, the big it becomes a vice. Then when it becomes a vice, sin comes from it. You might commit adultery yeah. or, or fornication. Now, the moment you give in to the vice of fornication or impurity, when you give into the vice, it means you have the vice of uh, impurity and the vice of gluttony at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you have the second, you also have the first. And the reason you have the second is because you did not control the first. Yes, the reason why you have the second is because you did not cure, cure it. the first, which is cured by fasting. Mm. Okay. You see, cured by fasting. Mm. No. Now, the moment you give in to the first gluttony and you give in to the second, which is fornication, you will descend to the third, which is covetousness, mm -hmm. to search for inordinate pleasure in possessing money, covetousness. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you are covetous, well, there's nothing wrong with money. Mm. There's nothing wrong with money, especially if you use it properly. There's nothing use. Even scripture says, what is wrong is the love of, of money. money. So it's a covetousness for money covetous is a love for money that's what is uh, the vice if you have that vice you're going to steal money that's the sin yes, yes, the sin comes from the vice mm -hmm. oh. now the moment you become covetous that's a sign that you have the three vices of gluttony fornication yes. and covetousness mm -hmm. And the way to solve the first, so you don't go lower, is fasting. The way to solve the second, so you don't go lower, is to marry. Yes. Uh -huh. And the way to solve the third is not to love money. Yes. To but... love poverty, poverty. So you don't go down to the fourth. Mm -hmm. So what you should keep in mind is, Every time you go to the lower degree of vices, the more you have all of them. Mm -hmm. So if you descend to vice number seven, it means you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vices. Right. You have yeah. all of it. Now, as I told you, all the seven vices are natural natural tendency in human nature, natural, there is nothing evil in it, except it became inordinate. So it became vices and the sources of sin. And the moment you have all the seven, you will tend to go down below the seven. What's that, brother? Uh, now, yes, one yeah, to this seven is natural. Okay. is natural. Below seven is unnatural mm -hmm. so in number two you want to marry a woman but in number eight you want to marry a man a man wants to marry a man number two is, it's natural a man wants, wants to, to marry, marry a, a woman, woman. And god made it so god what? made it so because it's natural yes and you said all you have to do is not to abuse it yeah but when you reach number eight a man becomes unnatural, he wants to marry a man. Fine, no? And that's how what happened to the bishops and cardinals of the United States. They went down. Meaning, they, do they not know about these uh, vices? <laughs> they should. They should. Know. <laughs> you know, that, that's what I mean, Father. It's right? part of the yeah, yeah. ascetical but theology. You know, but you know, you could know. But then you start going down and you don't do anything about it, no, Father? You go, it, it goes faster and faster, I think. Yeah, huh? the lower you go, it's faster, faster because faster, no? the vices are accumulating. Yeah, ah, so it's getting really heavy, really. Yes. 
When you are in the first vice, you only have one. It is easy. But if you go to the fifth vice, you have five vices. Yeah, carrying that's heavy. Yeah. If you go to the seven, you have seven vices. And to get back up, it's oh, okay. One minute. Yeah. Now we'll discuss. How, now we're going to oh. see how to to just the beginning of the analysis. Yes, 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 Father. We have only one minute, yes, Father. Yes. How to go back? What? Oh, yes. yes, yes. Which they should have done, but which they didn't know because they didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Did you know this? I gave solutions to each one. Yes, like the yes. first one, the first solution is fasting. fasting. So all you have to do is if you reach number eight, unnatural vices, you go up to seven and apply on your soul the cure for the seven vices. Then you go up to the six and adapt the cure for the seven at the sixth vice then adapt the cure for the fifth vice embrace the cure for the fourth vice until you reach, you reach the first one and adapt the cure for the first vice which is fasting and that's why we have holy week because that's yes, what we're supposed yes, to do yes. thank you very much father yeah. uh -huh. this is spiritual dialogues with father Don de castro and his homilies is the salt and light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, my dear sister and brothers. See you again.